Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on protists. So with Kingdom Protista, it's the official name, let's go over some basics of what makes them unique. Why are they in this kingdom of life? This kingdom contains eukaryotic organisms that do not have specialized tissues. So you're going to see that a lot of these resemble animals, plants, fungi, but they don't belong in those kingdoms for various reasons, usually revolving around the lack of tissues and specialization with the cells. So some protists are unicellular, actually a lot of them are, and others are multicellular. So we can't say that, oh, the reason why they're not animals is they're all single-celled. Well, there are some that actually do have multicellular versions. Some species um, are, are completely unicellular, others actually can be multicellular. Some are asexual in terms of how they reproduce. They just divide like bacteria do. And some are sexual. Others can actually do both. And I'll give you an example uh, later on in the lesson about one that can, can do either, depending on the conditions, uh, depending on whether or not there's another organism there that can mate with it. Mostly found in water. That's, that's traditionally true about protists, that they're highly dependent on water to survive. However, others can get by on land. Uh, and not just like a puddle um, or, or a stream of water. I, I mean that in soil you can find protists, but they do typically have to have a damp environment. Um, moisture needs to be there in the soil for them to survive. So it would be less likely that you would see them uh, in a desert kind of environment. They resemble but aren't categorized with other life forms, as I mentioned earlier. Because of this, they are described as plant-like protists, fungi-like protists, and animal-like protists. So here's a wide variety here. Um, we'll go over a lot of these um, later on in the lesson. This one right here is a classic protist known as paramecium. There are lots of different members of that genus, uh, paramecium. You will see this word come up again. All right, the origin of protists. So protists are like an evolutionary bridge between bacteria and multicellular eukaryotes. Keep in mind the bacteria are prokaryotic. They do not have nuclei, membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes do. Uh, so really the initiation of protists, we can thank endosymbiosis. We can thank that, uh, that occurrence that led to this kingdom. And the first eukaryotes on Earth could be called the earliest protist ancestors. And technically they're also our ancestors. Uh, we are related to protists. It's a very distant relationship, um, but Definitely, uh, we came from a single-celled being a long time ago. So if we were to, like, let's say kind of map out, like, here is the first cell on Earth, okay? And from there, you get bacteria. Archaea and eubacteria. And then from out of that, once you have endosymbiosis occurring, you get... Kingdom Protista, which is what this lesson is all about. And from there, you get plants, you get fungi, and you get animals. So how do you get actually from this purple area, you know, having these you know single-celled eukaryotic beings, to getting multicellular kingdoms that have highly specialized tissues in their bodies? Well, there's a lot of theories about that, and um, really it had to do with early on examples of cells coming together, cooperating, taking on different roles, uh, in order them to, you know, for them to actually lead to like the first simple animals, the first simple fungi, and the first multicellular simple plants.